t-shirt with a Superman hat talking about a Spider-Man movie. I am a walking contradiction and you love it. I'm going to be talking spoilers for Spider-Man. If you have not seen Spider-Man Homecoming, the short answer is go out and see it, man. It's an awesome Spider-Man movie. I'm pretty sure most people are going to like it. Yeah, you should just get out of here. Get out of here. I have a spoiler-free review if you want to check that out. You should check that out. I'll link it down below. So you have been warned. Let's get into this thing. A movie that I really, really liked, honestly. I love the fact that in the first five to ten minutes of the movie, they don't focus on Peter. They don't focus on anything that has to do with Spider-Man. They focus on Vulture, the villain of the movie. They actually show you why he becomes the Vulture. They show you how he gets to that point. Basically, him and his crew of people, he's got like a close-knit group of construction workers and engineers that work with him, and their company is basically trying to fix New York after the big alien invasion in 2012. Yeah, they're trying to salvage whatever they can and fix things up and clean it up, and then the government basically comes in because, you know, the government, they have to be a dick about everything, and they kind of come in and go, yeah, okay, well, you're, this operation is done. We're taking over. We have jurisdiction all of you people are out of a job. And immediately you connect with Toombs as a character because you're like, okay, well, he has a family, he has a wife, he has a kid, he's just trying to make a living protecting them and then these people come in and they basically take everything from him and take everything from his workers and so you really understand why he immediately after that is kind of like, yeah, no, fuck the government, we're gonna do things our way. After that, they start salvaging alien tech and Avengers tech, and they start combining it with regular weapons and stuff, and then they start selling these weapons on the black market-ish or whatever. I do believe that Michael Keaton as a Spider-Man villain is one of the best villains in the MCU. Although in fairness, I do think that this kind of throws the timeline out of whack. Pretty sure, I'm not sure about this, I'm not 100% about this, but I'm pretty sure that they just did like an X-Men type of fist fucking to the timeline in the MCU. Check this out, Avengers took place in 2012, right? That's when Avengers happened. In this movie, we see him and his crew cleaning up after that, and then the movie fast forwards like eight years, which would put the movie probably in 2020. But here's the thing, we know the movie can't take place in 2020 because Civil War happened last year, and this movie only takes place a few months after Civil War, so what year are we in in the MCU? <laughs> just a little thing i don't know if it actually matters but somebody please comment below and let me know about that timeline thing because it's starting to mess with my head a little bit vulture on a couple of different levels in this movie impressed the hell out of me i love some of the badass scenes i love the fight that he had with spider-man on the ferry that was like the closest thing to a really awesome one-on-one -on -one fight that they had another surprise that i didn't know that this movie was gonna have michael keaton is actually the father to liz the girl that peter is crushing on in this entire movie later on when peter goes to the house to pick her up for homecoming or whatever and he sees michael keaton peter's just kind of like uh, oh, sh uh, shit. Um, do I need to get her and the mom out of here? What's going on? Oh, wait, you're the father. This is going to be awkward as fuck. Yeah, and it ends up being really awkward, and then he sends her inside at the dance because he's like, ah, let me have the talk with Peter. He turns around with his gun. He's pretty much like, hey, 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 look, show my daughter a good time. Thank you for saving my daughter's life, but stay out of my shit, okay? Stay out of my shit or I will kill you. I will fucking kill you kill you you understand why vulture feels like that i mean it's very frustrating you're just trying to make a living for yourself you're just trying to conduct business and this spider pit person just keeps getting in the way and he's young and he doesn't really understand yeah you get it you understand why vulture is pissed at spider-man for most of this movie i do wish that the actual final fight between vulture and spider-man was a little bit better it felt kind of rushed and it felt kind of anticlimactic. ultimately spider-man doesn't even win the fight he just saves vulture's life because the vulture is trying to get this piece of tech and it explodes because it's it's a, it's a bomb basically and so that's how the fight ends i kind of wish the actual fight was a little bit more epic but uh, it's just a nitpick thing i guess tom holland on a couple of different levels in this movie really impressed the hell out of me i think my two favorite scenes are one is where he's at the party and he's trying to fit in with all these high school kids liz is throwing a party at her house and then she's like hey you know spider-man right how about you invite spider-man he's obviously spider-man so he has to go there and then he leaves to go put on the suit and then he's he's on top of the building looking down inside the building at the the rest of the kids at this party and you could just see the conflict in him you could just see he's like man i really want to impress these people i really want to be cool i i, I don't want to be this loser nerd but i'm spider-man i have a higher calling i shouldn't do this i shouldn't go in and just seeing the look on his face that really sold me on the conflict and the conflicting nature of peter parker and spider-man my other favorite scene in the movie is later at the end when he vulture basically drops a building on spider-man's head and then he's struggling he's just this kid he's crying and he's like he's weak and he 
he can't do it. And then you can hear Tony Stark's voice in his head. And Tony Stark is basically like, hey, if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. He finds the strength and he's like able to stand up and lift the building off him. I thought that was a really awesome and well acted scene by Tom Holland. Granted, you can kind of see that they're using the whole if you're nothing without the suit thing as a replacement for with great power comes great responsibility. And I know that some fans were a little bit upset because Uncle Ben does not get mentioned at all in this movie, like at all. There's like one little loose reference where Peter talks about Aunt May going through some things. I totally get it. I'm just saying I can see where they're going with this. Let's have Iron Man and his whole yeah you're nothing without the suit then you shouldn't have it that's going to replace with great power comes great responsibility speaking of iron man iron man is actually not in this movie much at all because he's only in like 10 minutes of the actual movie and if you look at the trailers and the marketing that, that is not the case they make it look like tony is basically they make it look like iron man 4 we've seen the memes we know what kind of culture this is it's actually not iron man 4 it's a pure straightforward spider-man movie tony stark is in the movie and he kind of shows up every now and then but he's not the point of the movie honestly i thought that tony aka robert downey was pretty good in the scenes that he was in right, now i can get into some of the fan-ish stuff I, in my original review i called them fits or fan nitpicks and i do have a few fits with this movie that kind of knock it down for me but i can't actually fault the movie they're just like fan things with me as a spider-man fan that i have to take issue with for one thing where's the spider sense where is the damn spider sense? Where is it? I don't I don't know where it is. Where is the spider sense? Godspeed, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man's having spider sense is like Superman flying. I mean, those things are just kind of inseparable to me. I am well aware that Superman started off not being able to fly, and I am aware that I think where they're taking inspiration from in this new universe is from the Ultimate Comics, and unless I'm misremembering, in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, I don't think Spider-Man had his spider sense right off the bat. I think he had to develop it or whatever. But even so, it's just kind of weird and frustrating to see Spider-Man constantly. People are getting the drop on him, and constantly he's clumsy, and constantly things are happening to him where you're kind of like, well, if he had spider sense, he could have avoided that shit. It's just weird to see Spider-Man in a movie that doesn't have spider sense. It just, it makes me uncomfortable as a fan. Not to mention, in Civil War, he kind of had it, didn't he? I mean, it, you kind of felt like during the final fight that he had spider sense. He even mentions that his senses are like tuned up or whatever. So I'm kind of curious as to why the hell he doesn't have spider sense in this movie. I heard a recent interview where they basically said like, oh, well, it's, it's not that he doesn't have it. It's just we don't want to focus on it because they focused on it too much in the previous movies. Yeah, but when you do that, you leave the impression that he doesn't have it because we never see him use it. It'd be like me saying, well, we focused enough on Superman flying in other movies. How about we just focus on him walking around like a regular chum in this movie? One of the greatest quotes of all time, my spider sense is tingling. You've heard it, I've heard it, everyone has heard it. The only thing that tingled in this movie is when Aunt May was on screen and, and something tingled in me because I'm, I'm assuming that was the point of making her really hot is that something has to tangle either way it doesn't make or break the movie it's just really weird another thing is the suit okay here's the thing i don't like the suit don't get me wrong the suit looks great i mean vibrant it's very colorful it, and it's it's kind of it's an awesome design or whatever i just don't like the suit itself because i think that the suit takes away from spider-man being spider-man spider-man's suit has an artificial intelligence that basically talks to him and helps him out with stuff i mean he's got an interrogation package he's got surveillance packages i mean he's got x-ray vision and a whole bunch of hearing stuff i mean it, forensically the suit can do anything for him and i just feel like even though he's a young hero i kind of want him to be a young hero that takes his lumps and learns on his own i don't really want a suit doing everything for him i don't know just on a fan level it just takes away from the ingenuity and the resourcefulness and the instincts and the intellect of peter parker aka spider-man i'm very uncomfortable with the way they did the suit in this movie not to mention they kind of negate peter's whole arc in this movie because the whole point of the movie is him learning how to be a hero without having to rely on a suit or having to rely on Tony Stark or whatever. But then at the end of the movie, he still has the suit. It would have been a great opportunity to segue and have him create his own suit or whatever. And now they're just, I guess, they're, they're going to keep the tech suit, which... I really don't like that thing. And I'm surprised that there wasn't as many ramifications for Civil War in this movie as I thought that there might be. I mean, the whole big point of Civil War was that you don't want heroes that are like going off and they're doing their own thing and causing damage and you want heroes to be accountable. You want them to sign the accords. You want the government to be involved. So I'm kind of curious as to why the government was not involved in Spider-Man in this movie, despite the fact that he becomes a public story. Like he becomes a big thing. This is kind of weird that the government isn't like looking into this. 
yeah, the police a couple of different times in the movie are like, hey, who are you? And yeah, we need to stop you. But you don't really feel like the government that was involved with the Sokovia Accords or whatever is trying to get involved. And I just, I find that a little bit odd. I thought that there would be some follow-up from Civil War in regards to that. They make a Captain America joke. Uh, Captain America is in these like infomercial videos where he's like advertising to kids. And they even say at one point, the teacher's like, oh, well, he's kind of a war hero now. But uh, they told us we have to show it, so we're, we're going to have to show it. Here's the thing. It, it kind of makes light of the whole Civil War thing. I, why would you show a video for a war criminal? I don't, I don't really get that. It's just, it's just kind of weird to me. I do like the fact that Aunt May knows who Peter Parker is at the end. That was kind of a funny scene at the end where he has his suit on, and then she comes into his room, and she's like, what the fl- uh, uh, Disney movie? We can't say that word. As in the end, Spider-Man Homecoming was a really awesome Spider-Man movie. I do think that it's the best Spider-Man movie that we've gotten since the first two films. I don't think it's over those films, but I definitely think since 2004, this is probably the best Spider-Man movie that we've gotten. I'm looking forward to seeing Tom Holland in this role going forward. It's going to be awesome. Of course, we have to do that with Zendaya being MJ now, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Guys, so let me know, what is your favorite Spider-Man movie of all time? List that in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show, and as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel, and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.